so this is one of not, one of the other reasons we want to go ahead and add another reason. One of the problems is stress, and this could be emotional, physical, or chemical stress. Remember that you know these things are chemical stressors. Immunosuppression can be chemical stress, but stress can be you know if you're in a bad relationship, if you are um, if you're dealing with family members who aren't supportive of your diet change, that's really really stressful. That's why I, when I always talk about you've got to buck up and you've got to go out there and choose the right diet for you and don't let anybody's opinion or thoughts around that bother you. You've got to be a gluten-free warrior. You've got to be a warrior as it relates to advocating for your own health so that you're not worried about what other people think so that you're stressing out because it's that stress. That stress does the same thing. It leads to elevation in cortisol, elevation in blood sugars and stress also. We understand what cortisol also does. Cortisol doesn't just elevate blood sugar. It's also creates immunosuppression. So it suppresses the immune system. That's why doctors use cortisol to fight inflammation. It suppresses the chemicals of inflammation by suppressing your immune system. So again, what do we have here at number two? We have immunosuppression. You see where all this is going. This is, this is like a big vicious circle. We could keep going on and on and on. I'm going to move off of grain because I think I've hit enough points for you to understand that, you know, and to justify why you would want to remove excessive grain from your diet and if you're gluten sensitive you want to remove it all. Immunosuppression can occur for many different reasons. I've mentioned here heavy metals, arsenic, lead, and cadmium, but other things can cause immunosuppression including things like mercury. Mercury being a heavy metal and some people have a problem with. So mercury can cause immunosuppression. Food allergies can create an overwhelm on the immune system and that's oftentimes for people is a part of the problem. Other things are infection can lead to an overwhelm. More particularly, more particularly though, the big things that cause immunosuppression for most people are the medicines that they're taking. Let's take a look at some medicines that can create an immunosuppression effect. Most drugs that are used to block pain, non steroidal anti-inflammatories, NSAIDs, as well as steroids themselves, so remember that cortisol is a type of steroid that we've talked about already, but a lot of the medicines for autoimmune disease. So if you're on medication to suppress your immune system, uh, to block the inflammation being caused, like tumor necrosis factor, inhibitors, um, drugs like Embril, uh, you know, these, these rheumatological medications, even drugs like methotrexate, which is not uh, this in the same class as a drug like Embril, but methotrexate, the disease-modifying anti-rheumatic uh, drugs, can create in, immunosuppression. So another very common one, even if you don't have autoimmune disease, but a very, very common one is allergy medicine. So those drugs that block histamine, so if you're chronic allergies, not only will chronic allergies create an inflammation, right, which will lead to cortisol immunosuppression, but the drug itself suppresses your immune system. And so, again, when we suppress the immune system, we can contribute to that yeast overgrowth. So a number of medicines that can create to immunosuppression or that can lead to immunosuppression, very, very important that you recognize that because a lot of people get in this vicious cycle where they're being put on one medication to address the yeast overgrowth. For example, if we look at medicines as a fourth cause, we, you know, we, we have a lot of overlap in these causes. That medicines can be a cause, partly because many medicines are immunosuppressant, but some medicines that aren't immunosuppressants, for example, antacids that block stomach acid. Stomach acid is necessary to destroy yeast. So when you eat food, there's yeast in the food that you eat. It's a normal contaminant of the food that we eat. But if you have strong stomach acid, then that acid is there to protect you and kill that yeast before it can go down deeper and colonize your GI tract. So chronic use of things like Tums and Rolaids and Nexium and Tagamet and, Xyla, uh, uh, and Zantac, that these are antacids that, again, will or don't act as an immune suppressant as much as they just act as an immune suppressant by suppressing your acid, which is kind of a different, it's a secondary mechanism, not a primary. So, We've got antacids as a medication. We've got antibiotics, right? Antibiotics naturally kill, and this is actually, we'll put a double star by this because this is one of the top causes of yeast overgrowth is chronic antibiotic use. So you take, you know, a lot of kids that go into the doctor's office, they got a cold or flu, the doctor doesn't test them for a viral or bacterial infection, they just put them on antibiotics. And a lot of kids, by the time they're 10 or 12 or 15, they've been on antibiotics 10 plus times, 
for chronic infection and they have yeast overgrowth even if they don't have like the oral thrush even if they don't have like the outward symptoms so per se of a yeast overgrowth but those antibiotics are a major major cause of yeast overgrowth and they don't suppress the immune system per se they unless you're considering that your natural probiotics are part of your immune system they pretty much are but again it's secondary not primary so antibiotics destroy your good bacteria making it very easy for yeast to propagate and grow out of control so we've got medicines that can work in an immunosuppression fashion we've got medicines that can work by blocking or interfering with normal natural mechanisms of your body that can lead to a yeast overgrowth as well so again going back to gluten and grains immunosuppression through medicine or through other things we've got chronic stress whether that's stress in your job stress in your relationship whether that's your to go and you don't take enough time off or take enough vacation or whether you have uh, unresolved issues you know those can all be emotional stressors that can contribute to this and then there's the classes of different kinds of medications that of course can contribute Hey, and if you missed the earlier part of this series, click right here so you can go back and get caught up. The information there might be critical to helping you on your path to better health. And as always, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe for updates below. Have a great day.